Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week we got a two part episode. The first half is gonna be a trip down to Vandenberg Air Force Base where we watched another SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launch and this time with good weather. And it launched the NASA DART mission, which basically is a spacecraft that's gonna smash into an asteroid. <laughs> and the second half of our episode is gonna be a few key components for production of the Game Tamer uh, card rack parts and that, that's this set of molds in the machine one of which is this heat isolator so that we could better control the temperature of the mold for long-term runs and the other is modifying an alignment ring for both of the molds on the a side so hope you enjoy okay we're back out here at Lompoc, california close to the vandenberg air force base and we're going to watch another falcon 9 launch from uh, that direction over there uh, this time we're going to see the Falcon 9 launch the DART spacecraft, which is a NASA mission that's going to intercept a meteor out in orbit of the sun uh, to see if it can be knocked off course to, I guess, future save the Earth if a meteor is coming for it. So, we've got the usual crowd in the middle of the field. We can actually see the moon out. I don't know if you can see that over there which is a good sign. So we may actually see the, the plume of the rocket over the mountain range, which is that direction right there. In fact, I can see a star right where the rocket should be ascending. So we're about half an hour out and already we got all sorts of traffic in the middle of nowhere. And let's see how this launch goes. Here it comes. Woo! That is one bright light. Nico. In recognition. So we just got confirmation of Miko stage separation and stage two ignition. So the booster is going to come down somewhere. So it's not over yet. Oh, it's not over yet. I don't think so. Start up. 
or it may land out at sea. All right, so we got stage one coming in. It's always awesome, amazing to see. Man, there's like a burn spot in my eye from watching that flame. Shut down. Are we getting some good video? Stage one, landing leg deployed. You, you can see this. You can see the drone ship. The landing legs are out. That is the third landing of this booster. So congratulations to SpaceX on uh, yet another one. Okay, well that was a successful launch. The plume from the main engines was so bright that it blew out my <laughs> camera lens. <laughs> and in fact, I still see like an image in my eyes from looking at the fire from the uh, nine Merlin engines. Now everyone's getting out of here. So we got the usual traffic jam in the middle of nowhere again. So I got to turn around and we're going to book. So we need to make some thermal isolators for these new molds in the new molding machine. So this is 12 foot by 20 or 12 inch by 24 inch Garolite, uh, which is 3 16 of an inch thick uh, or approximately 4.7 millimeter stick. And Garolite is basically circuit board material. It's just layers of fiberglass with epoxy resin, which is really high temperature and pretty strong, but not real friendly on machining. So I've got an old carbide end mill here and I'm going to I'm going to ride up onto the flutes to cut through this this fiberglass uh, with a single pass and pilot drill with older drill bit as well because really, uh, by the time you're done cutting a few of these your end mill is pretty much shot so that's why I'm using an old one and it'll just be recycled after that so I'll set the tool height So we've got two mounting holes that uh, will bolt this sheet to the A side of the molding machine. I'm going to slow it down. Do some coolant. There we go. We've got this block which kind of supports the sheet. I'm going to chase these holes out on the drill press after we're done here. And then this is the pilot hole for the end mill. And it looks like I need to move my block over. I'm going to move the block to support the this cantilevered sheet in the middle. All right, and hit go. And this is gonna go kind of deep to use some of the lesser used portions of the flute of the end mill. So here we're cutting a 125 millimeter hole, and that is the hole that lines up with the alignment ring on the mold and the alignment hole on the A side of the molding machine. That's it. Next, I'll probably put a lot of that fiberglass epoxy dust into the directly in the trash. So we are looking lined up. I'm going to move this half-inch end mill 
a quarter of an inch past the zero and that'll be a nice uh, reference stop to set our new piece of stock in. Or 6.35 millimeters past the zero for the metric folks. So we go uh, G zero X minus 6.35 and cycle start in the MDI interface. Okay. And we'll go down in Z until we are overlapping. None of this is precision machining, but it's quick little tricks to set your new zero. So now our zero is, it should be exactly where the last zero is because we moved half the tool diameter past. So the center of the tool times its diameter is, is results in the tangent edge to be at zero. But I'm going to fit check the first plate before I cut another one. <laughs> oh, that's annoying. There we go. I think for the next run, I'm just going to use the end mill to machine out these round pockets instead of trying to drill this, this crazy fiberglass material. But this step drill will, should clean up this hole a bit. The thing is, step drills are kind of expensive and this stuff will dull this high speed steel real quick. So I'm going to be kind of sparing on it. up the mold a little bit with our hook. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now we can stick our thermal isolators in. So how much does that mold weigh? Uh, it's aluminum, so maybe 200, 200 pounds. Wow. If this was steel, it'd be about 600 pounds. Yeah, pump is off. So this ring aligns the mold to the molding machine. And there's a part that's bolted to the mold, which isn't on right now. It's kind of a tight fit. Maybe a little too tight. I'm gonna have to knock it out from the other side. Alignment ring fits onto the front of the mold. But we had to take it off because the nozzle didn't quite fit through this bore. Mm -hmm. Or we were concerned that it wasn't gonna quite fit because there's a deeper pocket in the front of this mold. Um, so I may actually have to take this to the lathe and, and machine out a larger radius or inside diameter so that we have more clearance. So I may do that right now actually. But yeah, because we need this we need this alignment ring on the mold like that. And then this spacer ring fits around it. 
like that. And then our heat isolator fits over all of that through that hole there. So I will go over to the lathe and open up this hole a little bit just to maximize clearance for the nozzle that comes through this, this hole on the A side of the molding machine. So let's do that now. Just a little, got a little bent there. <laughs> video in right there actually oh. but yeah or if you want to do live action sure. with the GoPro oh or your camera yeah April was telling me I need to upgrade cell phones because the, the new cell phones camera is like twice as good as the my oh, iPhone yeah. 6 okay so what are you doing here I am screwing on the modified alignment ring for the mold. Uh, I had to machine the inside diameter larger so the nozzle on this new molding machine will fit through there. So hopefully that is enough, but I machined it as big as I can, which is basically the width of the flathead screws. And then this, this adapter ring we're going to put on, which is a tight fit on the alignment circle on the A side of the molding machine. And then, we have our, our heat isolating uh, gara light plastic sheet, which then fits over our alignment ring adapter like this. Uh, you can probably see a little bit. And then we're gonna stick all this back onto the A side of the molding machine so that we have better heat isolation. So we can get our polycarbonate mold hotter. If we add heat isolator spacers to this mold, we have to do the same to this mold because they're both loaded in the same machine. So that's what we're doing. All right. 
and I am going to pull the gantry crane over. It's good to have multiple angles. Okay. So, yeah, we'll push this some more. Bring the mold right up, and then we'll align our alignment ring to the molding machine platform. Like that. Now we got a heat space. And if I machine this spacer correctly, then these bolts down here will hold the spacer against the platen for future loading of molds. But I probably do need to put a bunch of washers on it. But since it's already pinched in, it's more of just kind of checking fit because I'm going to machine the second one of these. Assuming everything lines up and looks good, which it seems to be. In fact, I'll stick some washers on it. And then these heat isolators can just stay bolted onto the platen of the molding machine. I'm gonna just sneak it in there. Yeah, I need a wrench. Now I need to climb up in there and then bolt the other half of the mold, or the middle part. When you mount two molds, you gotta get in the middle. <laughs> so I gotta climb up on top. I need to make a scaffolding up here. Okay. Now, bolt the inside clamps. You probably can't see much, but I got this GoPro up here. I would be watching. It's all kind of tight quarters up in the center part of this, of this clamp. Making sure nothing's gonna crash. Okay. We'll do a little more. Alright. I didn't have enough material to get. Uh, both larger spacers, so we're gonna have to convince this one to fit right. So let me, but there's a little pressure on it, so let me back off. That much. <laughs> that still tight in there. There, it looks like it's free. Yeah, so somehow I need to. I've got magnets. Maybe I'll hold this this second heat isolator up with magnets, and then we can close it and then clamp it down. These heat isolators are from the 90 ton, the Chewbacca machine. But these magnets will hold it up temporarily. Let me stick this other one on the other side, and the magnets are skinnier than. The spacer so we should be okay yeah there they are okay because we don't want the center hole of this heat isolator to rub against the ejector rod which is pushing in and out on the ejector plate of this mold so we'll close and i will bump it ever so slightly just to grab on to our heat isolator. I have about two tons of force, which should be fine. And then we will clamp this second half of the mold up. Basically repeat the process that we did on this side. I'll probably just leave those magnets in there.
Actually, I probably should have sprayed some WD-40 in there. I'll spray some in the top and it'll dribble down. Thanks for filling this. Mm -hmm. And then back up to the top to clamp the center clamps on, on this. So 12 inches wide times two molds is the max that this, that this uh, clamp or this rotary table can handle as far as real estate is concerned. There's a good chance I'm going to drop some little uh, triangular blocks of metal. Maybe not. But it sucks when you're doing this solo and you drop a little block that you need because then you got to climb all the way down and get it. Yeah, but I can hit it too. All the way back up. Yeah, it's nice to have co workers. Sometimes. <laughs> What's up, Sierra? You bored? You want to get out of here? <laughs> you want to go for a walk? <laughs> All right, we'll do one as soon as I finish the wrap here. <laughs> one second, just, just hold your uh, leash there. All right, it looks like Sierra wants to wrap this up, <laughs> so we better wrap up. Yeah, so some of the footage you just saw was taken by my friends from Game Tamer, who make uh, the card racks and the token trays for board games, and they are going to be selling their product on Amazon pretty soon. And yeah, so here is the finished arrangement of the molds. You can see our heat isolator and the alignment ring is in and we've re, re hung the molds on both sides and we can close the mold here and get a good fit. There we go. You can see we've got the new heat isolator and then the borrowed heat isolators, which are a little undersized. I need to make B side heat isolators in the near future, but I probably won't film that. So we are good to go to continue production. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon if you'd like to see more. And I'll see you guys in about a week. Bye.